hopper. Let me show you from this side. Over. Okay. I guess. Mm -hmm. When you drop the material in, all the fines go on through there and hit the belt. This anything thing's that'll, shaking. Mm -hmm. Anything that'll fit between these bars will hit the belt and go on out. Y'all have to get up there and hand pick that rebar out every now and then? Yeah, before we start back, we'll, we'll, we'll get that, that out. Torch I got it out you. or whatever. And then that's the jaw. This one's stationary and that one moves. It's just on a cam, basically, a lobe. So that thing just, just goes mm -hmm. in and out like really that and it fast. crushes it? Yeah. Oh, really fast. Uh -huh. I don't know what RPM it is, but it just and as the stuff just falls in, then they're just get smaller and smaller. Oh hey, what's this one powered by? Like a 7800 horsepower engine, or I don't know. I didn't even. I don't think it's that that much. A lot of these have a, like an electric. They're like diesel electric. But this one's just straight diesel. Can you feed it pretty fast, or you kind of have to just You're let it go? To keep it filled up. Oh, just just does put it to it then. I got you. Yeah, keep it, you know, where it's steadily dumping down in there. And then, uh, on a full setup like this right here, what is like something like this new right here? This wrecking ballpark, you have any idea? We had to, the insurance uh, has it like 850, something like that, for the whole setup. It's not as much as I thought it would be. And this is, this, like, so this is a jaw, not an impactor. An impactor would be a big drum basically spinning with hammers on it you move it on a remote control mm -hmm. or okay i figured probably have right. it around yeah. remote control we just like i said we keep it plugged up pretty pretty solid but when we start running this dirt we'll have to run a little slower cause yeah through there just gotta get fogged i got so you gotta get that. so that that's the magnet right there then very powerful magnet keep your cell phone away from it so it it stays at that distance to the belt right there then, and it yeah, picks it. Move the belt. Uh, okay. If, if you got a lot of metal running through there, you let the belt on down, or else it'll clog up. And, what does it do? Uh, the metal just comes around and just hits that bar right there, and it knocks it off if it's something. Well, this, I mean, this is spinning really fast. Yeah. And as it gets to the end, it just flies off. It just slings it off. The magnet's kind of back in here. Okay, okay. It's it falls out. I got you. Uh, then the crusher run, which is the everything together runs up into the screen and, uh, there's the other magnet then right there that goes past there we, we added this because we had so much metal and uh, we weren't getting all the little little bitty pieces of wire and stuff like that so uh, we added that and it just dumps up there it shakes comes down and goes to the different size metal. yeah i see the screen up there so anything anything copper stainless any aluminum, anything like that, it keeps on going right on through at the end of it. It'll usually get caught on the screen. Will it? Okay. So you clean out the screens every couple hours. I guess. And all that stuff will just kind of sit there. And whatever doesn't shake through there just stays there. And or it'll either stay there or it'll shake down onto the oversized conveyor. So this, this, this conveyor shoots out everything. Like the jaw is set at like three and a half inches, three to three and a half inches. So anything three and a half inches basically. <laughs> the screen is, is inch and a quarter right now. So between inch and a quarter and three and a half, everything between those sides just comes out this side. And you have to I run it back you. through. And so all the, your copper and wood and whatever that got, got left in the building shouldn't have been goes through there and is in that pile of of uh, oversize is what they call it. And then every, the finished product goes out there, hits the conveyor, goes into the stockpile. Is it real bad dusty when it's running? Not really. It's, it's got not... a uh, water spray up in the main belt. Uh -huh. as, as it's crushing, it's watering that. So I got really, you, sun ain't too bad. Not much dust. And that conveyor over there will run like, like 57 stone. Okay. Clean without fines in it, if we have it turned on. But that messes up the 610, basically. If you do that, you, you, you pick one or the other, 
because if you run that, then all the fines go out that way, and all you have is fines. So if we were running 57, we just run it out there and then get rid of the fines or something like that. Mm. And, um, so that one just stays turned off over there. And, um, I mean, it's, I won't say it's simple, but the concept is pretty simple. It's a very <laughs> complex piece. And that's of just a loading chute right there then, or? Just a little stacking conveyor. Mm -hmm. Change the angle on it and go higher or lower or whatever. Right, so if you're in a stock pilot or something, you move it around a little bit then. Huh. But everything's kind of on track, so it's easy to pull with. But yeah. There's a lot of maintenance. And what does it burn? When you're running all of them together here, it burns a good bit of fuel or it's really not that bad. Not that bad. This has a small, that's a tiny engine for that, and this has a pretty small engine. Uh, the crusher might burn. 60 gallons a day. That's not bad. Day. No. But you gotta take into account we're shutting down every three or four hours to clean screens. And mm -hmm. If we run a solid three to four hours, we're doing good. So there's, <laughs> there's always something clogging up or a piece of metal getting stuck in the jaw. or Because we're not beating just yeah. sidewalk concrete through there. We're beating a building through there. Yeah, I got all, everything in it, man. Usually we separate a lot better, but our magnet is broke broken right now because on, on the machines the circuit board went out of it we don't have a magnet to pull the little little rebar out so we're just beating everything through here and relying on these magnets to get it out we can clean it up better first He's about to take that 355 right there and he's going to get up on top of the pile and he's got to move this back some because they're fixing to run. I'm standing up underneath the crusher right here. They're about to run the crusher and they got all this piled up too close to this small belt so he's fixing to dig him a spot where he can get up there on, the, on top of the pile and move this back. It's very weird running a machine that the thumb is attached to the bucket, so when you curl the bucket, the thumb curls too. So like with the thumb open right now, like it is, if you curl that bucket toward you, like you're digging, that thumb will actually hit that jib boom right there. Jib boom, stick boom, whatever you wanna call it. So you got to keep that in mind when you're running it. If you got it open all the way and you go to curl it, you got to shut the thumb at the same time. He going to push himself now.
let's see here. I think I'm gonna go over in the shade for a little bit. So this is one of those Napa hide beds right here. Gooseneck bed. I like it. He's got one of those uh, VMAC compressors. It's a screw. Those are some bad dudes right there. They will flat you with the program. What are the hours he got on there? Like 61 maybe? To give you an idea of the whole setup of the crusher right there. That's the actual, that's the machine that does the crushing. As soon as he gets that mood right there a little bit, then they're going to smoke her off and get rolling. So it's about got it moved. And what he's doing right now is he's getting him a he's locking him a spot down to sit on right now. He's kind of working it in. See him dropping that boom, he's checking to see if he's gonna if he's gonna tip or anything right there. When he reaches out to that, that crusher over there. Be a water liner cooking up to it there. About to. We'll see. All oh, this is new to me. See, he's connecting that thing on it right there. It's gonna be water. So that's the EMI bucket right there. Everybody always wants to know about the about the buckets. Well, this bucket is a little over two yard capacity, 2.125 cubic yards. The weight of it looks like 5,280 pounds is what that bucket weighs. I don't know if that includes the thumb on it or not. I imagine it is since it's made to it, bucket and the thumb together. Uh, Kind of unique, I've never seen one like that. With the thumb, you know, thumb attached on the bucket. I got her, got the screener running now. They're fixing to fire up the other. so much man
dirt's gonna pile up quick right there. bigger rocks right there. Got a little pile going. I'll walk over here to it. Got a piece of concrete hung in this track right there. That kind of looks like what I would call three inch stuff. If we were running it on logging roads, that's kind of what we would. So a lot of times we'll put on logging roads. Is that right there? You see all the metal coming off over there from the magnet. So you got three separate engines running. This is another one. This is kind of like what you would put on a driveway right here. That actually looks pretty clean. There's a bunch of them. I see, still seeing some stuff in that rock, that bigger rock up there, like some metal and stuff. But this right here looks pretty clean. Man, can you imagine the upkeep? Especially on the crusher down there, the where that concrete goes down in there, I would imagine there's a, a good bit of maintenance goes in on that. I bet. Spread that on the road that you were driving on.
right, so y'all got to see the crusher run, the concrete crusher run. There's going to be one more video from this series right here of just all the machines running. Brian had six excavators on this one job. Uh, had the two 355 Volvos that were brand new. Um, the 320 reduced tail swing. Let's see, a 345 700. I think that's it right there. I believe it is. Oh, and the other 320 that he had there on the job too that had a, had a thumb on it. The reduced tail swing one had a had a munch on it getting a rebar out. But uh, <laughs> that was new to me. I've never been around a uh, crush or anything like that. So that, that was completely new. I enjoyed being around uh, Brian. Um, I met him. Well, I kind of stumbled across him last year about this time of the year and then I actually met him on over into uh, June a little bit there. Yeah, it was in early June when I first uh, met him and uh, he kind of travels all, you know, all around the state. Uh, I'm sure he goes over in Louisiana and, and uh, in Alabama and stuff like that, you know, crushing or tearing things down, stuff like that. Demolition is what he does. And... Uh, but he's got some uh he's got some cool cool machines i'm gonna uh, continue to keep up with him where he's at um he actually enjoys me filming what they do uh he likes it uh and uh he's got me some hookups on some uh, with some different people on some different things it was pretty cool because the uh, ami bucket i'd never seen one of those ami buckets and uh nor the steel wrist stuff either and uh there's so many manufacturers out there that make that that kind of stuff man it's crazy when you kind of start looking around but anyhow uh, i got to meet one of the emi guys he was actually there on site that uh, flew in from uh canada and those those buckets are built in the edge of canada right there and uh <laughs> very well built too i'm talking about built like tanks uh when you walk around and you and you look at them and stuff like that and checking them out but uh just some cool cool videos i mean uh, bobby goodson videos and then the stuff with this this demo stuff with m and m right here and his new machines and and actually getting to run this stuff too you know and uh so right now i'm actually frantically trying to get ready for my trip to maine bangor maine to the Logan Expo 2019 be there Thursday and Friday this week, 17th and 18th. You think I have that down pat right now, but the link's down below for that. But uh, so it's we uh, Tuesday night. Y'all will be watching this. I will be traveling up there. Uh, obviously, it's still very cold up there. Down in the like today, it only got in the low 40s today up there. Uh, I think. On the weekend, it's supposed to get up in the low 60s, right around 60, 61, something like that. So it ought to be pretty nice. Uh, going to uh, be Bang Bangor uh, from Wednesday through Saturday. Be traveling again Sunday to, I believe it's Mount Washington, and be in... Groveton and Littleton, New Hampshire, Monday, and then let's see. Let me see what it looks like here. Where uh, I kind of get my duds right. Yeah, Monday's correct, and then uh, let's see. Tuesday will be something St. George's. And then uh, Wednesday will be at Rotebeck at uh, in Quebec up there. And then I'll still be in Quebec uh, Thursday there. And so got a lot going on over the uh, over the next uh, week and a half. Um, the uh, the Cotton Top Three brand when you it's it's just pretty major. Uh, stuff and everything so y'all are gonna get a lot of videos from it y'all gonna get to see some inner workings of stuff and and uh different things and it's gonna be it's gonna be a cool little series for that you're gonna get to see a lot of scenery from the uh northeast up there in that area and um 
I got everything situated here, uh, taken care of. Um, people um, here and everything at the house and all that. So uh, got all that, uh, got all that situated. So uh, got plenty of videos saved up too, man, to get me all the way through. So I'm not sure on the uploading though. So you just got to bear with me on the uploading there, maybe. <laughs> because I don't know what kind of Wi-Fi or internet I'm going to have. So things can make get kind of out of kilter uh, if, as long as I've got Wi-Fi. Because I, I, I don't keep any videos stockpiled. I don't like to stockpile videos like have them uploaded sitting there. Uh, I like to work the video up the night before or either the morning of the day it's going to publish. A lot of times it's on the morning. And... Uh, I can get in here and run through it. I don't I don't like to I did that one time where I got about twelve or fifteen ahead and I, I did not like it at all because I forgot what was in the videos that I was publishing and it was hard for me to somebody ask me a question about something. Heck I'd have to go back and watch the dang video to see what they was asking me a question about. But uh, huge thanks to Brian and the guys in M and M let me walk around with a camera, film it like I own it you know down there so uh here we go y'all see some more stuff from brian because he's going to be uh he's going to be doing a, another hospital this is a hospital here he did <clears throat> this is in vicksburg mississippi and um he's got a hospital in it's going to be a lot closer to me about two hours away from me and then he's going to be bidding on a job that's going to be real close to me so Hopefully he'll get that job that's real close to me. And if he does, I'll actually be able to go in the afternoons and go and work for him, you know, and everything like that. So uh, go to check out everything down below. All the clickable stuff's down there. If you missed the Bobby Goodson Swamp Loggers videos, they're all on the playlist. Go back a couple of days, pick those up. Great interview with Bobby. Incredible interview with Sumitrio. Oh my goodness, that was that was so good. So so good. And in today's video with uh, with his truck drivers talking to him, that was some good stuff too. So we'll catch y'all later. Later, Tavers.